In this video, I'm going over the Fair Schmidt model of inequality aversion. And if you haven't already, you should watch my other video on inequality aversion more generally. In that video, I really set up the frame, look at the prisoner's dilemma. This is really just a utility function that captures some cool things about the human heart that's kind of flexible if you're going to think about how people are motivated. So I really just want to go through this step by step and pull out its insights. Okay, this utility function is utility function for person I, meaning we're describing how person I feels about a certain outcome where they get a certain amount of money and other people get a different amount of money. X is basically the vector of the outcome. So you might imagine if there are three people and Amy gets a uh, hundred dollars and Bob gets fifty dollars and Carol gets twenty dollars that could be the vector it's just how much each people e each person in that group get now the first term in many of these models is just classic consumption utility it's just how much money does the owner of the model we're actually gonna call this Amy let's say this is Amy it's just how much does Amy get how much money does she get that's our classic part of our model now this next term, um, these two terms actually look pretty similar, so once we understand this, we'll, we'll pretty easily understand this. And I'm going to start over here, because this is really the centerpiece of this model. It's the difference between what um, somebody else gets and what Amy gets. Actually, I think it would be easier for me to explain this if we have an example sitting at the bottom, so let me just add that. All right, our scenario is Amy gets $50, Bob gets $100, Carol gets 20. So classic consumption utility, Amy has a value of 50 um, for the money that she actually gets. Now over here, we have a situation where somebody gets more than Amy. And we need to keep this separate from situations where Amy has more than somebody else because we want to allow for the possibility that people are way more sensitive when they have less than somebody than, we, than when they have more than somebody. And this structure is going to allow for that. So the only uh, person in this uh, triad who has more than Amy is Bob. Bob gets 100, Amy gets 50. Actually, let me rejigger these numbers just to avoid some confusion. I'm gonna say Bob has 90. Okay, so Bob has 40 more than Amy, in which case uh, how much Bob has minus how much Amy has is 40 up here. So I'm labeling this with how much more each person has than Amy. Now what's the zero doing here? The zero is basically saying if somebody has less than Amy, for example Carol, then Carol, the $20 minus Amy's $50 is going to be negative, in which case just put a zero here because we're not dealing with that here. We're going to put that in a separate part of our function. Okay, so we're capturing how much more does each person have than Amy. And if we added more people to this list, like let's say Devin has $120, well then he's going to be added into this function as well. You can add as many people as you want. It's just everybody here in this, this part of the equation have more than Amy. Now this term alpha is going to be the importance weight that Amy places on other people having more than her. So that's the importance weight on inequality when you are the person down, is the way I would place this. Now of course, this importance weight is the importance weight on inequality when you are the person who has more than the other. So one question I'll generally ask my students is, which is bigger, alpha or beta? And think about that for a second. And of course the I subscript is just the perspective. This says if this is Amy's equation, then it's Amy's importance weight on this versus Amy's importance weight on that. And most people will figure out alpha is going to be um, higher than beta for most people, if not all people. Most people are uh, way more sensitive when other people have more than them than when they have more than other people. We're almost there in terms of understanding this equation. All we have left is understanding the why, why is this importance weight divided by n minus one, where n is the number of people in consideration. It's the number of people in the group that you're sort of looking around comparing yourselves to. And um, the way of thinking about this is that this whole thing is kind of like a weighted 
average. Like it has a little bit of a feel of a weighted average. And so um, if we look at a regular average where we say, okay, Amy um, has 50, Bob has 90, Carol has 20. So what's the average amount of money in this group? We would do this. So here's the average, 50 plus 90 plus 20 divided by 3. That's the average amount of money that three people have. Okay, well the thing that's going on in the second two terms of this utility function is capturing the difference between Amy's amount of money and each other person's amount of money, one by one by one. So in this case, we only have two other people, so we're going to capture the difference between Amy and Bob and the difference between Amy and Carol. And that's always going to be the total number of people minus one. So if there were 10 people here, there would be nine other people to compare Amy's amount of money to. So nine slots in, in here. And the importance of each of those slots, of course, is weighted by the importance weight. That's just how it works. So essentially, you can think of this as a weighted average of the difference between Amy's money and each other, each other person's money, where the weight captures how important it is for her that, um, that, she, uh, that she have a similar amount to other people. Okay, now the last thing I want to say about this is that you could actually get a situation where people really like um, having more money than other people, but really hate having less money than other people. In which case, how, how would you describe what's going on in this model by just describing a particular parameter? And the way I like to think that is actually, um, in this model, it's an inequality aversion model, so the beta is a negative number or the beta is multiplied by a negative number. We don't like inequality. But if people really like beating out other people for whatever reason, then you could just change this to a plus sign and the beta importance weight would capture how much you love uh, having more than other people, which might be relevant in certain scenarios. So this is basically a really clever um, model of utility that captures people's utility over their relative placement relative to others in a group.